it's very important to have a basic knowledge of how a motor vehicle works, being probably a new driver and being somebody who is uh, new to cars in terms of how does it operate. Yeah. We're going to look at the design of a motor vehicle overall. We will not go so much into details, but just to give you a basic idea, as you begin to learn how to drive a car, how does it work? What is the technology behind it? So basically, this is how a motor vehicle looks like. So this is a simple illustration of a car, a small car for that matter. Yeah. So we have the front part, we have the middle part, and we have the back part. So here we have wheels, uh, and this is a simple layout of a car. So this is called the body. The body is the one that uh, holds everything that is found in a car. It holds the seats, it holds the engine, it holds the gearbox, it holds the wheels, and once you drive the car, all these things come into motion and the car starts moving. <laughs> so let us, let us see how does this work. So when you look at the design of the car, the engine is always in the front. In the old days, there are some cars that had their engine at the back. A very classic example is the Volkswagen Beetle. Its engine is found at the back. And most of the cars, 90% of, 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 of cars and lorries and buses, the engine is always found in the front uh, compartment. Uh, so your engine will be here. This is your engine, yeah, so that is the engine. Then we'll have the gearbox. So that is the engine. Then we have the gearbox. Okay, engine, gearbox. Then we have the, the, the wheels. Engine, gearbox, then we have the wheels. So how, how, how are these connected? The engine is connected to the gearbox. So the engine generates the power that moves the vehicle. When you turn on your car, the engine starts, uh, starts rotating. When, that is when you start the car. When you start moving the car, you have engaged a gear to move the car. So which means you have connected the engine and the gearbox. So both of them are rotating. Now, the gearbox is the one that sends the motion to the wheels, yeah? So, the gear, the engine uh, rotates when you start the car. When you engage the gear, the gearbox uh, rotates what we call the drive shafts. And the drive shafts relay that power to the wheels. And the moment that motion gets to the wheels, the car starts moving. So, let us break this down further. So we have the engine and the gearbox. So that is called your powertrain. Then we have the wheels and the suspension, which is called the drivetrain. Very, very important to note. Engine provides power to the gearbox and the gearbox moves the wheels. So engine is the powertrain and the suspension and the wheels and the drive shafts, those are called the drivetrain. So in a, in a nutshell, that is how a car is designed to move. The vehicle's powertrain and transmission system transmits engine power to the vehicle wheels. It provides for multiplication of engine torque or twisting force to accelerate the vehicle from a stop or for carrying heavy loads in the case of trucks. The system also allows for engine speed reduction at cruising speeds to save fuel and reduce noise. Key components of the system include a transmission or transaxle, a transfer case in four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, a propeller shaft to drive the rear axle, drive axles to drive the wheels, a clutch for manual shift, and a torque converter for automatic shift. Now, the drivetrain basically is... 
Suspension is the structure that holds together the wheels in front and at the back and the suspension includes things like uh, your shock absorbers, it includes things like the ball joints, it includes, includes your steering rack, all those things. When you hear a mechanic or someone say, my car's suspension has a problem, it is to do with the wheels and how the wheels are connected to the motor vehicle. That is the drivetrain. So the drivetrain has the wheels, the suspension and the drive shafts. That is the drive tool. An engine was designed to produce power in a technology that is called uh, combustion, internal combustion. So assuming this is your engine, so inside the engine there will be the engine block and in a four cylinder vehicle it will have four cylinders inside. Within these cylinders it will have pistons and those pistons move up and down they move up and down they move up and down to produce the motion that drives that rotates what we call the flywheel of the vehicle then we have your gearbox here and your gear lever yeah so the engine is already rotating through combustion and the pistons are going up and down and they are, they are producing a motion that is, that is rotating the, the flywheel. Our engine generates power from the expansion of compressed air in a contained cylinder with the help of fuel. That is why it's called as an internal combustion engine. For order to ignite the air fuel mixture, a spark plug is used. This will ignite the compressed air fuel mixture with the help of an electrical spark. We will take it down by each stroke. The inner crank itself, the flywheel and the crank counterweights provides momentum, which keeps the crank shaft from stopping immediately. And that is how a car engine produces power and simple. The gearbox has the clutch. So the moment you engage a gear, Let's say you've engaged gear number one while your clutch is still down and you release the clutch. The, the clutch and the flywheel of the engine, they get connected. This rotation that is coming from the engine is transferred to the gearbox and the gearbox has several gears. Those gears are actually to increase the ratio of the rotation that is coming from the engine. The importance of the gearbox is to convert the power that is coming from the engine to the wheels and determine what is the power required to move the vehicle and at what speed, those two things. So which is called the torque and also the speed at which we are moving, uh, we are moving the vehicle. So once you connect the gear and the, the, the engine and the gear, then the gearbox transfers the motion to either the rear wheels or if it's a front wheel car it will move the front wheel the front wheels so that is how an engine works now in order for this combustion to take place there are several uh, elements that are required number one we need petrol or diesel Yes, number two, we need air, and number three, we need, uh, we need fire sparks. We need fire sparks in order to do what? To ignite the petrol and air to produce fire. Now, this fire that is produced within the combustion chambers which is above the pistons, it's the one that pushes the pistons downwards or upwards, thereby creating a continuous motion within the engine. And that motion rotates 
the flywheel. And the result of that combustion after the cycle has completed is what we call exhaust. So it produces smoke. So that is why a car has got uh, an exhaust pipe and an exhaust system to be able to disperse the waste of the combustion outside of the engine. So basically that is how a car operates. And we shall now look in detail the parts that make the engine